Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everybody. We're here today, episode 2648. Can't wait to get back to our community's questions. Every single weekend, as you know, we answer our community's questions as they come in through Ask Cabral. That's that web page that allows you to ask any health question you may have. And I get to answer those in the order they come in. So typically, it's about 12 weeks lead time right now. Uh, but as I always say, you can get your question answered same day. We can help you find the podcast, find the lab, find the answer, find the protocol, whatever it might be, find the resource uh, just by going to Cabral Support Group. Com. That's a free private Facebook group, over 22,000 people and counting, probably 23,000 by the time this show airs. And what I want you to know is you can basically get same day answers right there. So don't be afraid to ask your question. You're welcome to, happy to answer that. But I always want to make sure that you don't have to wait 12 weeks before you get that answer. All right. So let's dive into the show. Let's see who we have up here today. Opening up the document right now, and let's go. First question is from Lindsay. Oh, and this one, uh, just a notation from my team that uh, we are not going to list the podcast name and the person who is more controversial on the topic of vitamin D, but basically um, they are looking to get my side of the debate on vitamin D that, re, that um, goes contrary to conventional medicine, functional medicine, uh, and even a lot of naturopathy. So I'm happy to do that. What we'll do is I won't name the actual doctor uh, or show, and I will do a podcast on the differing opinions on vitamin D. All right, so happy to help with that. And uh, Lindsay, just know your question has been noted and will probably be turned into a full show. All right, thank you for writing that in. Uh, Next one is from Lindsay again. I think Lindsay, let's see, yes. And Lindsay, you left off on yesterday's show, episode 2647. So uh, if you wanna follow along with today's questions, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2648. And while you're there, you may as well pick up a free copy of my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. It's literally free. I pay for it. Uh, we just ask that you pay for shipping. It's about the same to print as it is to ship. It's about $7 to $7.50 or so. Um, and I pay for the first half, and then you just pay for the shipping. That's it. All right. So Lindsay's up. Lindsay says, hello again, Dr. Brawl. One more question to have a conversation about. I'm breastfeeding, and I wonder about the future autoimmune issues for my baby. If I comprehend the autoimmune theory correctly, when the gut is leaky, proteins cross the lining, and the body sees them as invaders, creating an autoimmune response that expresses in the weak part of the uh, individual body. This is very simplified. Since babies are born with permeable guts, can proteins go through my milk to do this? I'm specifically worried because I have MODY or type 1.5 diabetes. Since dairy in babes can cause type 1 diabetes, if I eat dairy, will that do the same through my milk for the baby? What about allergen introduction? They should do the big nine within the first year. If one is a trigger, will it create autoimmune? These are great questions, really great questions. So um, here's what I wanna share with you. Yes, I mean, basically everything you said was correct. Um, the last part we don't know on, and I don't know that I would even be worried about that. Okay, so let's let's share with you, uh, let's summarize basically the great summary that you gave. So a lot of autoimmune issues have to do, and I've got my model right here, my buddy Walter. Uh, this gut right here is about 26 feet, and I just took off the uh, ileocecal valve there, but this is about 26 feet. And not quite, just a little bit less. It's about, uh, well, let's say a foot or so less because we're not taking the esophagus and stomach into it. But this becomes permeable. And if it becomes too permeable in adults, then proteins, bacteria, et cetera, begin to escape 
when they're in your bloodstream, your immune system becomes heightened, and it can, not always, but can lead to autoimmune issues. That could be rheumatoid for some people, Hashimoto's for others. It could end up as lupus, psoriasis. Uh, it could end up as forms of alopecia in other people. So that part is true. Now, the next part is uh, babies up until about two years old have permeable guts. They're supposed to be permeable so that when they're breastfeeding, they can get the immunoglobulins, right, the white blood cells and everything they need from their mother through, by the way, a miracle that we really have no idea about if they have a certain cold, sickness, et cetera. Uh, while they are nursing, the mother will actually produce the antibodies that are needed in order to help that child. It's, it's absolutely remarkable. It's, I mean, really, that's, that's the beauty of nature, right? So there's that part to it. Now, what Lindsay's worried about is, will she pass on her autoimmune issues to her daughter through breastfeeding? My, my again, I'm giving you my <clears throat> initial inclination. I believe the answer would be no. There's a lot of parents with autoimmune issues and their kids don't have to have those autoimmune issues. Typically, an autoimmune issue comes after you've filled up the rain barrel, right? It's not just one thing, that you have high levels of inflammation in the body, that the body has already had some period of time to become dysfunctional. I would, uh, if, if a woman is able to, I believe that there's probably more benefit than not. And by probably, I mean, I, I believe that, I know that not all women can, but uh, you're, you're giving a massive service to the child by able, being able to breastfeed. So that is that. Uh, introduction in foods, I have no idea with, I have, I have no issue with an introduction in foods. And if there is a reaction by doing them one at a time, you will be able to notice and you'll be able to then not continue to introduce that food. So hopefully that's helpful, Lindsay. Caitlin's up next. I'll try to keep this short. How do I know if I'm suffering from candida overgrowth or just have a lot of the symptoms of it for different reasons? I have severe eczema and dermatitis in my hands. I've suffered from this for years on and off. I'm working in a restaurant again, which has worsened it, but I know that my poor gut health in the past has played a role in steroid withdrawal as well. Uh, let's see what else. I took major steps to improve my health. Basically, I have skin issues. I have yeast infections sort of often, and now I'm experiencing dry scalp. Could this just be a few things happening at once or and or because it's winter? I live in New York. I'm sorry for the lengthy message and understand if you can't answer it on the podcast. Thank you for all you do. Of course, I'm going to answer it on the podcast. No problem at all, Caitlin. So um, here's the thing. I have assessments that are free. They're basically quizzes that ask you questions that I would ask you even in my practice. So go to stephencabral.com forward slash assessments. Take a free assessment, okay? That is not a diagnosis, just so we all know that I'm not providing any diagnosis, medical treatment plans, medical advice, or medical cures. What I look for is the underlying root cause. How can I help you to find if you have candida? Well, I can. we can basically run two labs. I would run three, the gut bundle, right? So I would run the bacteria and parasite stool test, the candida metabolic and vitamins test, and the food sensitivity test. If you can only run one, I would run the candida metabolic and vitamins test. Uh, you can find all of those at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. That's what I would do. That's the only way to know. Like nobody knows for sure unless you lab test. You can have strong inclination, 100% I agree, eczema most likely tied to a food sensitivity and or leaky gut, candida overgrowth, bacterial overgrowth. Most likely, yes, most likely I agree with you. So you can run the lab or you could do the CBO protocol. Um, yeah, so yes, all of that. Okay, hopefully that's helpful, Caitlin. LS is up next. Hello, Dr. Rawl. I'm an integrative health practitioner, level two, and I have a question regarding food sensitivity testing. There seems to be a newer version of this test called MRT, which unlike IgG, testing for only type three sensitivity is testing for the type four sensitivity. They claim that when the T cells identify a food as harmful, they release mediators such as cytokines, histamines, and prostaglandins, causing inflammatory symptoms. Since MRT apparently measures the release of the mediators from white blood cells, and these mediators are pro-inflammatory chemicals, which leads to chain reactions, wouldn't it make wouldn't it uh, make it much more accurate to test than food sensitivities? Thank you for your thoughts. All right, so I was using MRT and other forms of food sensitivity back in around 2010. And I had used that for quite a while. I'd used multiple food sensitivity tests that um, looked at IgM, IgG, I had looked uh, with MRT, and I was not satisfied with the results because they were coming out with dozens of foods that people were sensitive to, like so many foods. 
And so I said, well, this basically just means everything is reacting in the body. So we have to be careful on that because there's some level of reactivity to anything foreign we put in the body. And so working with certain mentors and, and, uh, and research I was doing on my own as well, I said, the easier ones to pinpoint are IG and IGA. And I don't want to charge people for that because typically the food sensitivity tests are like $600, $700 for the much larger ones. And I said, the ones that people really can't figure out on their own are the IgG. That's what I did, and it's been a game changer for our practice. Now you, as a practitioner, are welcome to do what you believe is the right thing, right? So like the thing is, I share with you what I know works well in my practice, and I know helps people. But if you find something else that you believe genuinely is going to help people in your practice, you don't need to shout down anybody else. You can just say, hey, listen, this is what I do, right? And I think that that's a great thing to do too. So I'm not here to hold you back. I want to build you up and I want to build up all the other IHPs. But this is what I do. And until I see a more replicable result each and every time, not just based on a one-time testing, which I don't love, right? Like if I were to, so you have to ask yourself, and you should run this because this is what I do for tests. Run your MRT, eat the same foods one day, take the test, okay? Two days later, eat the same exact foods, run the test. And again, there's a little bit of investment in money, but if you're gonna do a new lab, you might as well invest the money to see if it's right for you and your clients, right? That's what I do. I spend my own money, I run the same lab, and I look to see if I get the same results. If you see different results, basically on different days, I'd be careful with that lab, all right? I mean, like two days apart. Obviously, if you waited 12 weeks, it could certainly be different. All right, Melissa's up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. I've been working with a local functional medicine doctor, and I found out I have two MTHFR gene mutations. High estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone look good. High cortisol, and ApoE34 genotype. Low dopamine, high oxidative stress, uh, AA, EPA is high. Low MCHC, a marker for celiac disease, is high. Strep in my gut, no parasites. And my IgG and IgM are both very low. My functional medicine doctor is telling me to find an immunologist. I'm thankful to have all of this information, but I'm feeling overwhelmed. I want to reach out for any specific advice you can provide with this info, nutritional testing, ex exercise, etc. Are there certain foods I shouldn't be eating with MTHFR, G mutation, or high estrogen? All right, so bottom line, I'm going to tell you this, Melissa. This is why, and I'm not, I'm not being, as my grandmother would say, flip. You can't run lab tests just with anybody. And that's the truth. Getting your results is only the first step. I want people to really know this. Getting your results is just the first step. If your doctor simply runs the labs and then scares you with all of these high and low levels, in my opinion, they did more harm than good. This is the whole reason I created the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. The whole reason. So that I could train thousands of people around the world to be able to help people read at-home lab tests. Because you now are asking me to figure, and I, I'm always happy to, again, all this to figure out in, in a minute, right? Two minutes. And so, again, I, without being flip, it's, I just don't want people doing this. Do not run labs with a doctor that is not able to help you. There's no need. There's no need to refer you to an immunologist. Again, I'm not giving you medical advice. Your functional medicine doctor should be trained in basically integrative health. But keep in mind, functional medicine doctors, it's just a name functional medicine. It just means that they run labs beyond your typical blood work. It doesn't mean anything else. That's all that it means. There's no degree just in functional medicine. Sure, I did things like the IFM and those types of things, great. But there's not a degree. It's not a standard. It's really not. And so, anyway, I want to share that with you because there's so much to go over and all of this is fixable. It really is. So, my recommendation is this. You work with an integrative health practitioner or one of my team members at Equalife. That's really, because again, I'm not, and I'm not trying to say, oh, you have to work with us and pay us. No, it's, you can work with anybody, but all of this is fixable. You can't fix it in just a minute, a minute question, two minute question. And again, I don't mean to be rude by any re, uh, means, but look, I'm, I'm not answering it for a very specific reason. That all of this is fixable, but you need a real plan. Right? You need to know what high cortisol, the causes of it are. You need to know why you might have low dopamine. You want, might want to know why you have high estrogen. 
Like, all of those things matter. It's just not one-off markers. It's how it's tied to other things in your body. So um, I would go to integrativehealthpractitioner.org, click on the practitioner tab, find any practitioner anywhere in the world, most of them work virtually, they can work with you. All right, you have to find an IHP level two because they can work with labs. Um, or you can work with my team over at Equalife. And that's pretty easy. You can just go to stephencabral.com forward slash health dash coaching and uh, you can find a team member there. And this is more of a public service warning. I appreciate you, Melissa, for bringing this up, but this is more public service. Don't run labs with just anybody. It's dangerous because now they give you all these results that might look scary. They shouldn't be, Melissa. I don't think you have a lot to worry about. They may look scary, but then they can't help you with them. Uh, to me, that's, that's, not, that's not good medicine. It's really not. You know, the first um, oath you take is do no harm. I believe that this is harmful. I don't believe that this is do no harm. Again, so I try to look out for people. And so sometimes it makes me a little too fired up, but I don't believe that your doctor should have done that, my opinion. Again, I wasn't there. I wasn't in the room. They might have explained all of this to you. And they might have just been saying, hey, um, as a precaution, we're going to send you to an immunologist. That very well may have happened. And then your doctor, you know, they did the right thing. They did a great thing. But if you're coming to me asking me all these different things, it seems to me, that's all, it seems to me like they didn't do that part, which is the program, right? So like, it's like the result is one thing, fine. But then you have to educate them as to why it's happening. And then the protocol as to how to rebalance your body. The labs is the easy part. You can run that anywhere in the world, right? So anyway, sorry, I have to get off my soapbox there. Um, you know what? We're going to, that was, uh, that was <laughs> I probably went a little overboard there. We're going to keep it at that for today. I will be back though tomorrow uh, with our Mindset and Motivation Monday. And, uh, and I'm telling you right now, it's going to be in a positive note, moving us in the right direction. All right, so I'll be back here, but take care. Hope you had a great weekend and I'll talk with you soon. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.